everybody in this room speaks this wonderful language, and we all do the same thing, right? We all color hair in a salon. And I don't think there's ever been a better time to be a colorist. Things keep getting better and better. But uh, things keep getting a little tougher, too. If you notice, you'll see that most um, research firms are telling us things like more than 70% of American women color their hair one way or other. But guess what? More than half of those women are doing it at home. And the color companies that cater to these women and that also sell to us, some of those companies, are making a lot of money on retail and trying to teach women to do a better job at home. How many of you have seen the, car, the kit where now you can do your own ombre at home? Nice, right? What about the kit where now they're putting the oil in your hair because that's the best way to put the hair, the hair color in the hair? And there are better home highlighting kits, better ways to approach these things, and you think, my God, what do I have to do now? What we have to do now is what I have been at. Why am I getting this feedback on this mic? Maybe I'm standing in the wrong place. Let me try over here. Sorry, guys. I think what we have to do is make hair color so special and make it an art form. My reason to live, I think, was to elevate hair color to an art form. And that means making what you do so special the woman simply thinks she cannot reproduce it at home. And by the way, most of the time, they can't. I want you to think if I gave everybody in this room a fabulous manicure kit and the best selection of, let's say, OPI or SE polishes in the world, and I asked all of you, you had, a, you had three hours to give yourself a perfect manicure. I bet you one hand would come out better than the other, right? And I bet you you couldn't do what a professional manicurist does. And it wouldn't be as much fun as sitting there and talking. So what I'm asking you to do is to elevate our color to an art form and to do things to clients they cannot do themselves. And you've seen this on my videos. I visited with so many of you at our booth today, our Joyco Beth Minardi booth, and that is stop thinking that a single process color is your way to wealth to fame, and to happiness as a colorist. Stop thinking of things as quick service, budget service, hurry it up, just a single, retouch your roots, she's only a gray coverage. We've got to start thinking differently. And that doesn't mean that every single time the woman comes in, you're going to do hours of work on her. But you can't just Think of her as an in and out client. And we need to do some things with creative booking. And that means each of you has to allow enough time for that client to come in and feel like she is the queen of France and feel that what you are giving her is not possible to do at home. I can fry a hamburger for you, flip it over, throw it on a bun, squeeze some ketchup on it, and go, there's your hamburger. It's not quite the same thing as going to a lovely restaurant, sitting down at a lovely table that has a tablecloth and being correctly served. But what we are serving up in many salons is far too informal. And we are not surrounding ourselves with the accoutrement, the thing that goes around, making it great. So think of your station for a second. And I'm not, don't, don't be mad at yourself, but think of your station, think of where you work, Think of your salon. Think of the atmosphere a woman walks into. I would hope that where you, that your station is clean. I would hope that your station does not have pictures of your dog, your children, or some art and craft popsicle stick thing your kid made at school. Sorry. I would hope that you have the correct things to create hair color. Do you have combs that are clean? Do you have brushes that are clean? Clips, foil, a movable cart so you can take care of your clients? Is the chair in great shape? Is your mirror spotless? Do you have Beth Minardi color perfect lighting or at least some great lighting in the salon? Are your salon walls white or off-white so that the client, I can't stand, I'd love to walk towards you guys, I can't. Um, is the environment correct for color? The best color environment, I will tell you, is a white floor, white walls, and a white ceiling. 
But guess what? Most salons can't do pure white. But I had a lady write to me on BehindTheChair.com the other day, and she said, what should I do? Our salon owner is not a hairdresser, and he has painted the salon pumpkin orange, and he's calling our salon the pumpkin patch. <laughs> and she said, what am I to do? And I said, frankly, your owner has to know you can't have orange walls and do really great hair color, because whatever the client sees is going to be warmer. She's going to get outside and think her hair is ash. Or no matter what you do to try to create a good blonde, she's going to think her hair is orange, right? So we shouldn't be working at the pumpkin patch. Even if your salon has purple walls, ask your owner if the wall behind you and the ceiling can be light or white, OK? If your salon is not going to be correctly lit, make sure your station is correctly lit. Are you working with an assistant? I hope you are. I hope that if you're booking more than five, six people a day, five, six, seven days a week, you have an assistant, a full-time assistant working on your chair, because that person's going to become your co-colorist. And that person is going to be able to take people when you're on vacation, or when you're sick, or when you want to move to a four-day work week, or when that person, a client, needs somebody to come in Sunday morning, or at 5.30 or 7 a.m. on a Tuesday morning, and you can't be there. That co-colorist becomes your other set of arms. And we have to share our knowledge, bring it forward, pay it forward, and give to others. And we have to stop thinking. I, I watch very interesting colorist now who's booked solid. He has four assistants. He takes a person every 15 minutes. His work is technically fine. It is boring. It is lackluster. He only uses two or three formulas. He wraps every single head in the exact same way. I don't know how the man doesn't just go out and hang himself because he's so damn bored. <laughs> Nothing sings a song. Everything's wrapped the same way. He never tries any new formulas. He's not attending a show like this. You, you must know people like this, right? They put them in, they put them out. They put them in, they put them out. They put them in, they put them out. But what happens is they don't grow. And when the, t the clients don't grow, they go someplace else. And they might say, when I get a new client, I'll say, why did you come to see me? And sometimes the answer is this. I'll say, have you been going to different salons, or have you been going to the same salon for a long time? And a lot of them will say, I've been going to the same salon for a long time. And I'll say, well, then why are you here seeing me? Because I didn't think she never offered to do anything different for me. So I guess she didn't think there was anything different for me. Sometimes a person will come in for highlights every month, or she's a redhead, or she's a brunette. She's waiting for you to suggest something different. Maybe she wants to still be a brunette, but what about some really pretty caramel pieces in her hair? Or maybe she wants to stay blonde, but maybe she would like a few pretty low lights or highlights through the hair. Change does not mean going from one category to another all the time. She's blonde, I'll make her a redhead. She's a redhead, I'll make her a brunette. It means through the seasons altering her color formula a bit or altering our approach or altering what we do so that she sees that it's special and she can't get it everywhere else. If every month it's just a single, just a single, just a single, just a single, it gets boring and they think they can do it at home or they will look for a salon that's doing it for less money, right? Also, it's very important how you look. If you have crummy hair, if your hair looks like you stuck your finger in an electric socket, if your hair is burned off, if your hair is broken, or, you know, whatever. You're not, it's like going to a dentist with rotten teeth. And we've all talked about that before. If you decide to look very natural, but you never tweeze your eyebrows, or you never wear makeup, or you don't care how you dress, the client's going to think you're not interested in beauty. The client has to, and that means if you want to look funky, that's great. If you want to look modern, that's great. If you want to look of your time, that's great. But you've got to develop a look. And you can't just say, I'm going to wear sweatpants and sneakers because it's comfortable and my feet hurt. You've really got to make an effort to be the image of what we do for a living.